On the show, we're looking at radical alternatives. And for that to happen, you first have to have the imagination. You have to have a place where people can come and discuss and feel that it's safe to express themselves. Offering alternative visions of what America could be like that can transform our criminal justice system, our economic system, our political system. I was an anti-war activist. I was involved in the student protests at Columbia University. There was so much going on in the 60s that we began to face the civil rights movement, anti-war movement, the women's movement. So we need to tackle those same issues in different forms as well today. We're looking forward to joining with the younger generation, with all of us, uh, in this effort, because we can't do it alone. We need to do it together. Even Sondheim, everyone says don't, Sondheim says do. Welcome once again to the Radical Imagination. I'm your host, Jim Vretos. I'm a sociologist who's taught at John Jay College and Yeshiva University here in New York. Noam Chomsky, considered by many as the world's greatest intellectual and the most cited living author of our time, remarked in a recent tweet it's a large part of the academic profession to make up complex, subtle arguments that are childishly ridiculous, but are enveloped in sufficient profundity that they take on a kind of plausibility. The basic principle is that the losers have to confess, not the victors. When they do it, it's a crime. When the rich and powerful do it, it's not. 
He goes on to offer an example of how the attack on Social Security is similarly motivated. Social Security is typically based on the conception that we should have sympathy for others. Academics should not see it, as they often do, as functioning merely as isolated national wealth maximizers. Chomsky has been writing and talking about the role of the academic and public intellectual for much of his life. In 1969, his groundbreaking book, American Power and the New Mandarins, described a rich tradition highly critical of the role American intellectuals have played in designing and implementing public policy, interpreting historical events, and formulating an ideology of social change. For the most part, he argues, these academics and public intellectuals falsify, restrict, and subvert the possibility of true progressive change. Now, originally, mandarins was a term that referred to bureaucratic and pedantic officials in the Chinese empire who were persons of position and influence, elders, traditionalists, and reactionary members in circles of power. Today, however, they are the intellectual and activists who are challenged to meet their responsibilities in the face of a new generation of contemporary military industrial police power. A power vastly more technologically and psychologically sophisticated and viciously destructive in their mechanisms of social control at home and abroad than even Chomsky might have imagined back in 1969. He puts it succinctly. Political, intellectual, and economic elites do not take the actions of ordinary people seriously, and it becomes easier to mobilize negative and punitive actions against them, while at the same time creating enough fear to control other like-minded groups who might dare to join in the rebellion. On September 25th and 26th at John Jay College here in New York, the second annual Smart on Crime Innovations Conference will be held. It advertises itself as a nonpartisan public statement proving that the momentum for criminal justice reform will continue in the face of outdated, tough-on-crime policies. The conference will emphasize the need to maintain a commitment to criminal justice reform and tackle the unexplored and difficult questions that must be faced in order to move forward toward a smarter, fairer, and more just system. Now, reformers, self-styled do-gooders, identified as the best and brightest, have always been replete in the history of the American Academy and university world. Some of that leadership influenced the scope and duration of the, of the uh, Vietnam War, efforts of mass incarceration, wars on drugs, omnibus crime bills, stop and frisk and broken windows policies, to name just a few. Prison, the idea of the penitentiary itself, was an American invention, an idea spurned on by well-meaning reformers like the Quakers in response to the tough-on-crime policies of their day, corporal and capital punishment. Even St. Thomas Aquinas, certainly not a mean or malicious soul, sought reform by advocating the burning of witches at the stake in order to bring about a chance for their salvation. Many witches, I'm sure, given the chance, would have declined the good saints' well-meaning intentions and reform. Uh, at first blush, the conference's presenting statement and some of the speakers listed don't seem to be particularly stacked with craven, careerist, Mandarin-type academics playing up to political and economic elites as their pawns and enablers. Yet, it remains to be seen what these unexplored and difficult questions are that must be faced and whether and how the conference will face them. For example, will the conference be directing its attention to what the psychiatrist Jim Gilligan has called structural violence? These are the much, much higher rates of deaths and disabilities that the poor have suffered throughout history and around the world in every society in which wealth, privilege, and power have been unequally distributed. Structural, since they are caused 
by the social and economic structure of society and violent since they are injuries to people that are caused by the collective decisions made by people in power, the victors, concerning how to share or not share their collective wealth and income. Furthermore, it remains to be seen how and how much the victors will demand and how much in what form the losers must confess. It should be mentioned that the conference is being supported in part by victors like Coke Industries and features a talk by Mark Holden, one of its most prominent spokesmen. To further help us understand the Smart on Crime Conference and the atmosphere and culture of the world of the Criminal Justice Academy, and John Jay College in particular, we're thrilled to have a colleague and comrade of mine on, that from John Jay that I've come to truly respect, trust, and admire for his intelligence, integrity, courage, and persistence. He's tried to make that institution a more honorable, fairer, and more just place to study and learn. A place where there really is a fierceness about developing a community of scholars and students working to bring about a truly progressive society that's not only smarter, but more socially, economically, politically, and morally just. Matt is an associate professor of psychology at John Jay and on the doctoral faculty in clinical psychology at the CUNY Graduate Center. I'm thrilled to have him here. Welcome, Matt. Johnson to the Radical Imagination. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Great Jim. To have you. Have thank, you. thank you for having me. Give us some background to this conference, some of the work have you been, that you've been doing, the research you've been doing concerning it, how you've gotten involved in all of this. Well, first of all, just let me again thank you for inviting oh. me to be here. And, and I want to remind you. your audience that uh, this is the second time I've here, I was here. Yes. I was here in spring of 2017. Okay. Focused on these same issues, actually, but there have been developments since then, and um, so I'm glad to be back again. Same so, um, you yeah, I'm not really sure where to start, but I'll start with, um, I probably should start uh, when we became concerned about the Koch Foundation uh, penetration at our, at our college. Initially. Initially. Okay. And that was in 2015. 15. It's actually the end of 2015. And um, it's important to note uh, Professor Dolores Jones Brown, who was the first one that alerted us, um, when I say us, me and other people in the faculty, that this was a concern. And it, again, it was the end of 2015, I believe it was in November. Um, she uh, had attended a uh, professional meeting. Um, I don't remember whether it was, I think there was actually one on the campus and there was another one within a week or so mm -hmm. at another location. And the president, uh, who was Jeremy Travis at that time, made remarks about the Koch brothers being partners or being um, somehow uh, collaborating in this in, in this uh, conference in this endeavor. Um, and um, in the first in the first conference that was being planned. Yes, this right. was this was back again in 2015. Right. Which is before Smart on Crime. We're not before, remember, before we haven't got, smart, got up to right. so-called Smart on got Crime. Okay. okay. So uh, Dolores um, sent a notice to um, w one of the deans at the school um, who was um, overseeing the college's diversity efforts and raised concern about whether or not the Cokes um, were, um, whether their views and their policies and their philosophy was antithetical to the justice tradition that John Jay um, aspires to. Mm -hmm. um, and originally, um, the president at the time, President uh, Travis, said that the Cokes didn't had, had no relationship with the college. And he, de he denied that there were, were any ties um, at all. Um, and Dolores pursued the matter. Um, and um, she notified me and some, several other people. Um, and through a series of emails. Through, yes, yeah. through a series of emails, yes. Right. Um, and um, then later on into 2016, it became apparent that in fact there were some, some ties that the Cokes had with the college. Because while President Travis had denied that there were any ties, um, during the spring of 2016, a couple things emerged. There was a, the Charles Koch Foundation had placed an ad soliciting research on one of the college websites, yeah. um, which was, um, you know, alarming, number one, because the president had said there was no relationships. 
alarming number two because that's not traditionally the way that a uh, funder would um, would uh, make an announcement for uh, requesting a, a research projects. Typically, it go through the College Office of, for the Advancement of Research. Advancement. So yeah. that also seemed unusual. Um, so um, that was in the spring of 2016. Um, at that point, when I after I saw that ad, um, the following fall, I notified some other people on the faculty. I was concerned about it. Uh, the president had denied this was an issue with, with, with Dolores, but obviously there was something that disrepresented. And um, in fact, it finally did come out. It did that come out. There was some. Yes. It, influence. Well, well, it, no, it didn't come out. We, we, got, we the other indications, but it was all it was all very it was hidden. That was part of the problem. That it was it was hidden. Okay, but you so into into the fall of 2017, um, it remained uh, unclear exactly what the relationships were. Right. Okay. Th then later on, um, uh, I had a I had a uh, I actually may be a little bit off about some of these sequence of things, but at some point I I wrote a message, an email message to President Travis and said that obviously there's a relationship the college administration has initiated with the Cokes um, and that it was important that, we, that, that, it, that it be uh, clear that there be full transparency mm -hmm. and that many people uh, object uh, very strongly to the Cokes and what they represent in terms of their record of a variety of things which we'll get into. Mm -hmm. um, and the president uh, defended uh, any Koch involvement under the um, idea that it was a reflection of academic freedom. Um, so with that, I uh, initiated a uh, exchange with him where I told him that academic freedom, I believe in academic freedom, but we have to look at how it's being defined. That academic freedom is not a license to um, allow anything at the academy. You can't use academic freedom to hide behind things that are uh, unethical or immoral. Um, just like there are limitations on freedom of, there's freedom of speech, but there are limitations on freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. There's freedom there, uh, you know, so you can't right. use that slogan to, just, to justify it, you know. Um, That's a great point, very important so, point. So um, I recommended to him that the college, um, now let me just say, in my position, I thought that the college should have no, should have no uh, relationships with the, with the Cokes at all, which I can go into. Okay. But my position uh, with him at, uh, at, at that point was that, well, why doesn't he convene a panel of our faculty, of um, attorneys if necessary, um, to investigate and look at this? I have views on it, he has views on it, but let's pull together a group of informed people to, to look at it closely and maybe they can come up with some guidelines or some criteria, some vision to try to address this. Um, which Sounds I, reasonable. Yeah, which I, which I said would be, uh, we could we could think along the model of the, of IRBs, which people in academia are familiar with IRBs. When faculty are conducting research, um, they have to they don't have absolute ac academic freedom to conduct any kind of research. They propose their, their research, they send it to peer a peer group, and they review the research to ensure that the research is not threatening or potentially harmful to research subjects. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a clear illustration that while there's academic freedom, there are limits on the academic freedom. Mm -hmm. Uh, President uh, Travis rejected that idea. Um, and um, mm -hmm. later into 2017, he announced, I don't remember when he announced, but at some point in 2017 he announced he was going to be resigning. Um, and um, he did resign. Um, and um, into, I think, the beginning of 2018, we, the college began to search for a new president. Um, and maybe I've Maybe, I don't know if I'm, if I'm off yeah. topic or no, am, no, I, am I answering the question? Right. No, you're doing oh, okay. great. This okay. is wonderful. Giving us a terrific background. Okay. Our audience needs to All hear right. this. So um, into 2017, the, uh, we, know, we know that President Travis is, is, is uh, resigning as of, uh, I don't know, June or July. And so in the early part of 2017, there's a presidential search committee right. for, a new, for a new president to follow President Travis. Okay. Um, and eventually the search committee um, decides or, or selects um, Carol Mason, who's a former um, uh, assistant uh, attorney general in, in the United, uh, assist, assistant U.S. attorney general. And she's named 
to yeah. become the new president of John Jay College. And she's running during which administration? Was it? She Clinton? was in the Obama, Obama, Obama administration. Okay. I don't know if she was in anything prior to that, but she, and Travis she was himself in, was involved. Travis was in the Clinton administration. The same um, group. Well, I don't, the well, same. I mean, the, the same. same the, Demo the Democrats. The, yeah, the, yeah, but the, yeah. Uh, the 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 committee you were talking about that she came from the. Um, you know, you just you just said that she was working. Uh, uh, um, Carol sorry. Mason was in the U.S. Justice. Attorney General, yeah, U.S. The right. U.S. Attorney's Office. Which and Travis was. Travis was been. no, I believe Travis was actually in the Department of Justice, which okay. is different. Got it. I okay. mean, and not that I, 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 mean, I understand, but it's different. The, yeah, it's yeah, the, yeah, 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 similar circles. Some yes, certainly, clearly, clearly, I would Got imagine. It. Okay, yes. okay, yeah. Got it. So, um, so. President Travis sort of exited before he gave a full disclosure of what was going on with mm -hmm. the Cokes and this mm -hmm. apparent Coke liaison affiliation that, that had been forged. Uh, we don't know whether he initiated it, whether the Cokes initiated it, um, but we felt that it, um, it uh, was something that the entire college community needed to be informed about and needed to be heard on, but, but that, never, that never occurred. So. Um, so he's exited. He's exited. Although he's re-entered now, he's going to be speaking at the second conference. Yes. We'll get into that. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So, so he now leaves, we have a new president. So he leaves um, right. in, in 2017, and we get a new president, right. uh, Carol Mason. And it's I, I, relevant to say Carol Mason is the first female president of John Jay College of Criminal Justice. Mm -hmm. She's also the first African-American president of John Jay College of Criminal Justice. Mm -hmm. And I think it's fair to say that uh, many people um, and the faculty and staff were very enthusiastic about her coming in, being different, uh, mm -hmm. being being a woman, being African American. Um, Breath of fresh air. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and um, from the old boys. Yeah, yeah, ex network. exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, so lo and behold, um, as we approach the fall semester of 2017, right. actually after we begin the fall semester of 2017, I think like in September of 2017. Now. Carol Mason, she didn't officially begin her tenure until I think August. So she's only been there like four or six weeks. And it's announced that she's gonna hold a conference in, I don't know sure if it was September or October of 2017. Yeah, so just within er, early in the yeah, semester. Yeah, within the right. first seven or eight weeks, weeks yeah. of her being there, exactly. she's gonna hold this conference. And Which has to be prepared. It doesn't take two obviously, three weeks. Yeah, obviously okay. she pre had prepared the conference before, before, well before she came to John Jay, you know. But yeah. she announces that she's going to have this conference. Right. And that um, Coke Industries, right. you know, not Coke Foundation, Coke Industries Industry. is noted to be a sponsor of this so-called Smart on Crime conference that Carol uh, Mason is bringing to John Jay College. And the now, keynote speaker... The, I don't know if one, one, of, the one of the keynote speakers, keynote speakers was yes. uh, Mark Holden, Holden yeah. who is uh, identified as the general counsel for Coke Industries. Um, and so, you know, I'm, I'm alarmed um, and other people on the faculty are alarmed mm -hmm. about this. I, I talked to people about it for, for now for more than a year. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it, it had been a, 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 um, a lack of clarity from Jeremy Travis. Mm -hmm. But now the new president comes in, and she already has apparently established some some uh, firm uh, relationships with the Cokes, where they're going to sponsor this conference on this so-called crime conference, presenting um, you with a fait yeah, accompli. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So I was I, I was very disturbed about it. Many several people in the faculty were as well. So the people that I had been working with and communicating about this issue, and, and by the way, um, Dolores Jones Brown, she had resigned. She retired from John Jay College, yeah. noting one of, the, one of the reasons why she resigned was that she did not want to be and did not intend to be affiliated with a institution that was affiliated with the, with the Cokes. So, um, in addition, she got a, a lot of flack as well. well Pushback from she, some of the members. She, she well, certainly did. She certainly did. But I, I, know, I know that she she's spoke on record that she right. part of her reason for for retiring or and or resigning, I'm not sure which which it is, was because of the coke. Retiring. You know, and I don't know what other what other things might have entered into the equation for her. Right. You know. Right. Um, but I think that's relevant to note that. Mm-hmm. It is. 
So, um, so let's see. So, so we're here. We have the new president, um, and um, she's. It's like she's. It's like a relay. It's like you know, uh, <laughs> Travis passed the baton on to her. Yeah, there. You know, yeah. and I don't know what ties they have or if they both have been involved in Coke. Um, as, you, as you probably know, the Cokes are very active politically, and they have different front groups. And that they you, want, you want to explain that a little bit? I don't want point? to explain it. No, no, let me, no. let okay. me talk about the college a few okay, more minutes. We'll get that. Right, right, you right. Can ask me we'll about, that. You can ask me about that. Got it. So, okay. so, but, you know, to us it's like, it's, it's like a baton had been, you know, handed from him, from him to her. And, um, Without getting sufficient explanation of yes, why ex and what we're ex exactly, happening. Exactly, exactly. why. So, uh, so uh, myself and several other faculty members, we wrote a uh, mess email, sent an email message to the president asked her if she'd be willing to meet with us mm -hmm. um, and told her that we had been involved in this concern about the coke penetration mm -hmm. at our college for several for more than a year now and it, the issue had never been cleared up by Jer by prior president president mm -hmm. travis mm -hmm. and that now we see you are uh hosting this conference with coke uh sponsorship and we are very much concerned about that so president uh mason mm -hmm. will was willing to meet with us um, she met with myself and two or two, I think two other, uh, I don't remember, two or three other people who were, became part of our coalition of concern. The about Coke. professors at yes, the college. Yes, yeah, other professors at the college about this, um, this, this Coke liaison um, concern that we had. And um, she was very cordial with us in the initial meeting, but she was quite firm that um, she intended to... Um, uh, partner with the Cokes, and that she saw the Cokes as a potential funding source, and that um, she uh, had no intention of, um, of, um, of, of retreating from that position, and that um, she actually had a particular uh, uh, program she wanted to launch, and, she w and she was, it was her impression that Cokes were going to be able to fund that, that for her. Did she, say, you know. <coughs> did she sort of say that she wouldn't elicit the funding, but would accept it, or did she? No, that came sums up later. But at this point, she told us told you, th okay. that that um, she intended to um, seek funding from them for some of I her see. initiatives, okay. and that fund fundraising was a large part of what she was doing. She also told us that Mark Holden was, I don't know if she said friends or, but she, she had a relationship with Mark Holden. I don't want to misquote her, okay. but she said she had a relationship with Mark Holden. He was a really good guy. And mm. to uh, to 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 uh, mm. substantiate that he was and a good Judge guy. Judge Kavanaugh, uh, I, I had to get that <laughs> no, in. Okay, okay. All to right. substantiate Sorry. that he was <laughs> a good guy, she yeah. told us that he believed in the right to counsel for all dem uh, criminal defendants. Right. The mens I think every. Rea. Yeah. No, 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 not mens rea. Okay. The right to yeah. counsel for all criminal defendants. Okay. This was an indication. Okay. How could a lawyer? not believe in the right to counsel. Yeah. I mean, how, how could that be a litmus test for the, a, a lawyer's yeah. ethics? I mean, that's okay. like psychologists say, I'm a psychologist, so I think people should have the right to get a psychological examination. I mean, that's merely self-serving. I mean, that, that certainly is, you know, I just didn't understand how she thought that somehow or another was, would be influential to us, you know. Um, but anyway, this is what she, she indicated during our first meeting. Um, and um, so she, we left the meeting. She said that she had no intention of, um, of uh, being responsive to what we were suggesting. We, we also presented to her the proposal uh, that I had mentioned earlier, that we had presented to Travis, that, you know, we, we're, we're not trying to dictate what the policy should be. Why don't you select faculty members or me members of the administration, maybe a couple of people that have legal training, Let's convene a panel, a task force, a committee, a, a, a committee yeah. to look at the question of donor influence. Generally. Ge donor influence. Okay. And are there criteria? Are there things that we need to be concerned about? We reminded her that uh, the IRB regulations are relatively recent phenomena. IRB regulations emerge from recognition of major uh, human rights atrocities and violations that occurred by academic researchers. It recurred, occurred as a result of academic researchers. Um, uh, probably most well known as the US, health, pub US Public Health Service Tuskegee study, mm -hmm. which virtually everybody knows about today. 
there were African American men in I don't remember what state it was, one of the southern states that were exposed, Alabama, uh, yeah. Alabama that were exposed to. Um, um, I'm trying to remember the disease now. It escapes it me. I think it, it wasn't polio. Mm -hmm. It was one of the venereal diseases. Okay. Syphilis. They were, they were exposed to syphilis and were denied treatment for the purpose of seeing what the natural course of this, uh, of this contamination would be. So for years, they were studied and observed, even when treatments were available. And this was research that was conducted by the United States Public Health Service. And it was, um, it was discovered and the whistle was blown on it. And it in, in the 1970s, I think it began back in the 1930s. Right. So this was an example of researchers believing that they were studying something that was valuable and scientific, and that their research, um, their research goals were more important than the interests and the lives of the people who were being studied. For the larger good. For the lar yeah. So you know. So this is why IRB um, protocols emerged because of things like that, because of things like the experiments that the Germans conducted uh, during World War II on vulnerable populations and, th and things of that sort. So you had these sort of tragedies, and this is why IRB protocols e emerged in the aftermath of these things. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I suggest and I hold, and I still hold, that today with these uh, issues about funding of research um, and that it's important that um, we look at where the funding sources are and and, and questions can be raised about whether or not there may be unethical um, or immoral or other, otherwise untoward consequences from research. The individual researcher is not in a position to make those decisions independently. Right. Every individual researcher believes his or her research is worthy, is important, is potentially, you know, uh, 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 um, you know, going to make a big difference. Uh, exactly. In, in so this is why you have other peers who look at the work and can evaluate it in a less in a, and in that's a, university yeah, exactly with, in, in yeah the academic exa exactly exactly right, but 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 and I'm, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna i'm gonna say something else sure. something else that informs my uh perspective on this i completed my doctoral dissertation in 1984 i believe and my doctor doctoral dissertation was on psychosocial factors associated with cardiovascular uh, health risks and more specifically, um, um, high blood pressure. Mm. Um, and in my doctoral dissertation, um, I cited extensively the leading um, stress researcher of, of the day, who was a Canadian physiologist by the name of Hans Selle. Mm -hmm. And uh, Professor Selle, who was um, well uh, qualified academically, he had university appointments, he was a, a well published in scholarly scientific journals and had also written books and did television appearances and so forth and so on. He was a very highly renowned uh, researcher. Um, we learned uh, 20 years or so after his death that his research on ca cardiovascular morbidity and mortality, um, where he, um, he introduced these uh, important models for understanding cardiovascular uh, uh, disability. Um, one, one called the general adaptation syndrome um, and the other called the stress response um, uh, reaction. That these were his models to explain how people respond to stress and then would undo stress. This, this higher, uh, high, high, or high, lower uh, blood pressure. Uh, increases their blood pressure, right. increases the risk of cardiovascular incidents okay. such as strokes and heart attacks. Right. This was his, this was his life, life's work. We learned 20 or 30 years after he died that his research was actually funded by mm. American and Canadian tobacco companies wow. who were giving him money mm. to, to, to conduct research that they could use to argue that tobacco exposure did not cause cardiovascular mm. uh, uh, deaths and, mor and, and, and morbidity but it was actually people's re re reactions to stress. Mm -hmm. And these monies that uh, Dr. Sale received were um, secretly channeled to him through public relation firms and law firms that Big Tobacco hired to conceal wow. their funding of his research.
Mm -hmm. And 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 um, this really hits home. Yeah, I mean, this is this is for real. I mean, this is yeah, for real. Yeah, this yeah. is for real. And the recent and this is for real. Of the and, and, yeah, yeah, position at Sloan Kettering too. Yeah, I don't know about, but let me let me, the, but let me yeah. mention a few other things sure, about Silly. Sure. Silly, incredible. Yeah. So um, now, um, <coughs> um, there are records are available now that show the um, the the the, this, the uh, hidden communications between. A sale and the and, and big tobacco through these right. intermediaries, yeah. and, and 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 big to, and tobacco use the use his research to defend itself not only against civil suits in the United States but in England, in Australia, and in several other countries, and they also use his research to um, to to challenge uh, legislative efforts and public health efforts in these other countries. For how many years? I don't. I can't recall, but this a went on for more than a decade. Yeah, more than a decade. More, certainly more than a decade. Absolutely. You know, yeah. and, and and certainly I can send you some of the updated. Yeah, yeah, no. You know what, what was discovered uh, subsequently. So this this is not some sort of. Um, it's not new. This is no. This is not new, and it's not some sort of uh, 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 minor technical academic point we're making here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we know now about the devastation that tobacco use caused, and that knowledge was um, was was. We were deprived of that knowledge mm -hmm. emerging earlier because of the financial interests of uh, the, the big tobacco and how they circumvented um, uh, regulation um, to, to, to keep, these, to keep these, th those relationships uh, secret. So this is, informs uh, my perspective when I, go to, when I went to President Travis and more recently went to President Mason and saying, look, this is an opportunity for John Jay College to be a leader. We, can, we have um, uh, uh, noted scholars here at our institution in a variety of different disciplines. Mm -hmm. We could mm -hmm. put together a, uh, a, a, a committee and we can investigate this and we can use our findings to inform, because this, this issue about, about the Cokes and other donor influence at universities, this is a national issue. Mm -hmm. This is not something that's unique to John Jay College. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. issue is, is, is being raised at a variety of different uh, uh, institutions ar around the country. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. So, um, so th that's sort of a, a bit more of the background. So President Mason comes in, as I said, she, tell, she met with us, uh, she was cordial, but she said that she had no, she, she had no intention of, 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 um, of uh, retreating from her, her plan to, um, to uh, seek this funding through the Cokes. Right. So um, we've begun to um, expand our campaign uh, we released um, what we refer to as open letters to the uh, college community uh, through email. Um, we organized a teaching at the university mm -hmm. uh, where uh, five different faculty members from five from four different departments to raise consciousness. Um, yes, yes, to, to, to raise consciousness, educate yeah. faculty and students about what's at stake. Um, we were very much concerned about the reputation that uh, um, the, our, the, the reputation that our that our college enjoys and has earned, mm -hmm. being tainted by the idea of, of us being affiliated with the Cokes. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 I I know you know, and I imagine most of your audience knows that that the uh, Coke Industries is a serial environmental crime offender. Mm -hmm. That they are uh, one of a few a few organizations. That is one of, that is in the top ten polluters in terms of air pollution, water pollution, and 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 and, and adverse effects on the climate. That's been you know, a well yeah, documented, and, yeah, it, yeah. and and for the sake of time here, mm -hmm. we want to get make sure we get as much of the story okay. out here. Okay. Uh, so you you uh, you tell me what. Well, <laughs> no, no, you're next. you're doing terrific here now. Mm -hmm. So we're up to now, the the second conference and attempting. You've gotten an, an, a response. Okay, so so in 2017, yeah. after President Mason told us that she had no intention to retreat, right? She then comes back to us. Uh, I imagine, in, in, to a certain degree, as a result of our campaign, she right. says no, she's willing to reengage with us. She wants to talk to us some more. Right. And and just to fast forward, by December of 2017, we have a meeting with President Mason. Okay. Um, the representatives from the faculty senate are also present. Our coalition is represented, and President M Mason um, offers, not offers, she states to us that she's willing and she intends to abandon her effort to solicit funding from the Cokes. Exactly. Um, that okay. she recognizes that there are, um, there's a tremendous opposition to it at the college, and that um, she can't continue with her 
effort, her fundraising efforts for the college with this issue looming in the background. So but given that yeah. she's going to she's going to suspend, you know, any any um, solicitation of funds from the Cokes. But still there were grants, a couple of grants, right? Okay. They were already okay. there and okay. that was okay. gonna yes. academic freedom that so the yeah, there was already there was already there was a one professor who had already received some funding from Cokes. Right. Um, and so this her her agreement or pledge not to seek, not to seek Coke money applied yeah. to her as as the president. We weren't saying that, that people on the faculty couldn't so okay. couldn't you know so we weren't right. that wasn't that wasn't our, our intention or our goal. Gotcha. But and there was another sort of institute or center at the college that got some money from the Cokes. But the, we didn't want the president as the uh, symbolic and actual head of the institution to have this liaison with the Cokes. Right. And she agreed that she would not pursue that. And that was in December of 2017, and we we. But if were, they wanted to give, she wasn't necessarily going to. That uh, was never phrased to her that way, that so way, that that okay. never came All up. Right. That never came, that. never okay. came up. Okay. So now, but, but now, yes. but now in uh, 2018, in the beginning of the fall semester, just a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. discovered she's having her second so-called Smart on Crime conference, and when we went to the uh, web page for her Smart on Smart on, Smart on Crime conference, there's a icon saying that it's sponsored, that the Coke Industries is a sponsor, is one of the support, sponsors of, of, this, of this effort. Yeah. Yes. So okay. this was in violation of our, of the pledge she gave us at the end of 2017. Right. Um, I emailed her for clarification on it. Um, she gave me an explanation which I think, think is um, totally inadequate. She said that um, she uh, worked with the, uh, I think it's the center, some other organization, I, I don't remember the name of it, some other organization to organize the conference and she basically sort of like outsourced they it to them yeah, and, they, and they, and she couldn't tell them not to have Cokes. Got it. Not to have Coke. That in, was her yeah. argument. So that was uh, a violation of a pledge she gave us. Um, we just got confirmation that, like I said, it's just a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. The conference is scheduled to begin next week. And we have. Uh, That's why we wanted to we have, have you on. We have restarted <laughs> our campaign yeah. right. um, against Coke uh, penetration at our college, and particularly in, into our college administration, and and that's where we are now. <clears throat> wow. So we all thought that the academic world was sort of uh, sleepy and just you know removed from uh, the political intrigues of of, of the world, the outside world out there. So. You, so you find yourself now interested in doing what? Raising well, contract? You, you've been, uh, you've been in a, okay, you have this response from her. Mm -hmm. What do you now plan on doing? Responding to that well, response as inadequate? What we wanted, what we intend to do is we intend to uh, continue or restart the campaign at the college. Um, and, um, um, there are m many people, students and faculty, that are very much concerned about it. Um, so we're going to have um, we're going to show we're going to have <laughs> some sh uh, showings of the Company Town film, which is the uh, I think it's a 2017 documentary about the uh, environmental devastation mm -hmm. visited on uh, Cross Set, Arkansas, by the uh, Coke plant Coke there yeah. that uh, adversely uh, affected the African American community, which was which is in very close. Proximity to the um, to the Coke plant. Um, it's a Georgia Georgia Pacific plant that the Cokes have have have, have, have purchased. Right. Um, and and a, you've looked at, at the agenda for the conference uh, with, with a fine tooth call. You've you've seen who's going to be speaking. Tell us a little about that too. Are they what what sort of issues are they addressing? Well, let me say this 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 about the Smart on Crime conference, which I I, I used to say the so called. Smart on Crime Conference, or the Not So Smart on Crime Conference. Okay. Right, right. So, um, as we so say in this program, what, what we think we're thinking about when it's Smart on Crime. But okay. okay. So, a couple of things that, that are that are that are noteworthy about the Smart on Crime Conference. Number one, um, they have a list of topics that they're focused on, um, having to do with prisoner reentry and racial bias and uh, uh, prosecutors and defenders mm -hmm. and um, some common yeah. sort of crime Some topics. Yeah, issues. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, Important issues. Um, they say that they are, they are taking on and tackling the un, 
the difficult or the un, uh, unart adequ un inadequately articulated issues in the field. Right. So one thing that's noteworthy and, 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 and conspicuous about the conference is no discussion of corporate crime. No discussion of corporate crime. You know, the idea that, you know, mm -hmm. so crime. white-collar crime? No, no not discussion not of white-collar crime at all. Corporate crime, crime or white-collar crime or environmental crime Structural are not crime. addressed, okay. are not addressed. Now, obviously, they can't address environmental crime because the, the, the uh, organized criminal activity of the Coke Industries, they're supporting the conference, so they're not going to well, support the conference if, if it's yeah, well, a crime. crime. You but know, but, obviously, but they should. That's, but, but remarkable, and the reason they aren't is, okay. yeah, Remarkable we how, you know, uh, we, we're all looking at the news from North Carolina. Right, exactly. And, 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 exactly. and how many months ago were we looking at the news from Puerto Rico, from Puerto Rico and in Houston before that, you know? And so, obviously, there, uh, there's been climate change that has affected and devastated um, yeah. People only, and I'm just talking about the United States, Absolutely. but this climate change yeah. thing is, is, is an international issue. And it's clear that climate change has been precipitated by fossil fuel Absolutely. overuse. Which is tied which, which, is, which is how the Cokes have made their money. You know. I wish we, we, okay. we're, we're, we got just a few more minutes, but, okay. but I want to make sure we, we understand a couple of other issues. Uh, there are no, uh, how many John Jay professors are actually presenting? Was there a call for papers for this? Well, I don't conference. believe there was a call for paper for the conference. I never saw a call for papers. I believe everybody was just invited. Who selectively did the inviting, I don't know. Okay. But remarkable, again, in a remarkable omission, there are 70 either plenary or breakout group speakers for this conference that's at John Jay College of Criminal Justice, which is right. the pr premier criminal justice liberal arts institution worldwide. And that's right. no exaggeration. I'm not, I'm not, I'm right. not no, you know, right. to, you know right. no exaggeration. There's not one John Jay College faculty member who's participating in this, co in this conference. Wow. I mean, wh I mean tell you what something. is that? I mean, the president so. is hosting the conference at our college but we have renowned scholars in criminology, criminal justice, forensic psychology, and the forensic sciences. But none of them are deemed worthy to be part of this conference, the crime conference at our college. Very peculiar. I mean, and I'm being generous saying it's very I, peculiar. I know you are. Yeah, and I, yeah. I wish we, and we have to do another show on this, but, but Matt, I admire, I love what you're doing. It's incredible. We're both going to go to this conference and see what's going on. And I think Noam Chomsky uh, rings true here in trying to filter through uh, what's going on and what's not going on. And the real, you're getting at the real role uh, that true, free, progressive intellectuals and scholars should be about. So thank you again for your efforts and keep at it. And um, thank you so very, very much for being well, thank on you. the Radical Imagination. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate it. And maybe I can, maybe I'll be back again. We'll yeah, see. well, you <laughs> definitely will be. We need to, okay. there's a lot more to talk about. Yes. And uh, thank you again, all of you watching us here on the Radical Imagination. Uh, this is Jim Vretto, this is your host, my guest, Matt Johnson from John Jay College. And we're going to go out with Tracy, Tracy Chapman talking about revolution. Thank you again. See you next week. show we're looking at radical alternatives and for that to happen you first have to have the imagination you have to have a place where people can come and discuss and feel that it's safe to express themselves offering alternative visions of what America could be like that can transform our criminal justice system our economic system our political system
I was an anti-war activist. I was involved in the student protests at Columbia University. There was so much going on in the 60s that we began to face the civil rights movement, anti-war movement, the women's movement. So we need to tackle those same issues in different forms as well today. We're looking forward to joining with the younger generation, with all of us, uh, in this effort because we can't do it alone. We need to do it together.